What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network here to bring you another 6th gen narrated Wi-Fi Pokemon battle OU. Now, I said this in an earlier status update video, but some of you may have not seen it because those don't get any views. So, just to clarify, I am going to be posting Pokemon Showdown matches, which aren't going to follow the exact same format as my Wi-Fi battles per se, but they will be somewhat of a quick fix for people who want to see a Pokemon battle right away. And plus, I gotta go with the times, you know? Uh, Pokemon Showdown has really advanced a lot since 5th gen, and in general, it's become way more accepted to see battles of that and I was waiting for that because before it wouldn't get a lot of views so I'm going to be uploading Pokemon Showdown now. Aside from that I will also be uploading, a, well not uploading technically but be doing a live stream event in around two or three days so keep your eyes open for that. I'm really hoping it goes a lot better than the last attempt I had because it was basically a train wreck and the last thing that I want to bring up is the fact that it took me a little bit of a long time to get the second Wi-Fi battle up. That was mainly because I was waiting for the action replay to get all the items because my last team, well, the same team I'm using here, it didn't really have any items, so I needed to make sure that I waited for the AR, and by the time the AR came in, there were a lot of other projects that I was working on, like the Titanfall and the um, the rating of the AR itself, so I got a little bit caught up, and now that I have the AR and I have the items, it'll be a lot more fluid for me to get Pokemon battles out there, and when you couple that along with the fact that I'm doing Showdown as well now, you guys will get a pretty good amount of Pokemon content, I'm hoping, in the near future, so keep your heads up for that, because it'll be really cool, but anyways... I'm not here to waste much of your time talking, we're actually here to get into a great Pokemon battle that I had against somebody by the name of Nails, and this was a great opponent because, like like my last opponents, he used somewhat of an unorthodox team, using OU Pokemon, but mixing it up, i.e. mixed tier, and that's why I keep telling you guys, mixed tier to me is the best tier, because you don't just see the same Pokemon over and over again, and you never know what to be prepared for, it's a, it's a, it's a freaking thrill at the end of the day, but um, let's not waste any time, man, let's get into this Pokemon battle right now. So, like I said, battling someone with na named Nails, not with Nails. He comes out there with his Amber Palm, and I go out there with Barbarical for no reason. I've just been using random leads nowadays. I go into Metagross to be able to get up my Stealth Rocks, but the thing about this whole situation is that even though my Metagross has Stealth Rocks, somewhat of an odd set, he uses Thief after getting the normal gem, captures my Choice Band, and I go for the Stealth Rock thinking, um, alright, I guess I... I gave him a boost there because my Metagross has three attacking moves and Stealth Rocks and you know with the Choice Band on seems a little unorthodox but it works in some cases because I do get a lot of powerful hits and usually when I set up Stealth Rocks I switch right out. Anyways, I go into Cena and some of you may be asking why do you call it Cena? Cause it's a motherfucking wall, that's exactly why. And um, Cena's gonna be able to wall Amber Palm really well, but not Quagsire as much. Now, because he was in Quagsire, I was thinking he's probably gonna go into Tyranitar to set up his own Stealth Rock, seeing that I have a Houndoom in the field. So let me prepare for his Tyranitar switching by going into Barbarical, who has the Brick Break hit the Tyranitar. Oh, 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 excuse me. I didn't do that yet. I didn't do that yet, but I'm going to do that later. Keep that in mind. But for this point now, knowing that Quagsire is a mostly special, I go to Joan of Arc to be able to take any hit since my Joan is specially defensive and would be able to take hits from a Quagsire, no problem. But here's where I predict Tyranitar to come in to set up on my Escavalier. And instead, I get a Skull to the face. And this is my physical attacker who gets the burn as well. So I just fucked up royally there. That was the worst move in the game. I'm gonna tell you right now, quite honestly, that was the worst move ever made in the game. The worst prediction possible because I was scared of the Tyranitar with the Stealthies, so I just lost my, one of my only physical attackers on the team, if not my only physical attacker, aside from Escalvalier, of course. But now that I lost Shanty, I can still get my head in the game. I'm just gonna have to play really careful now. I go into my superior on the Ludicolo switching because I'm thinking, okay, he won't be able to leech seed me, but instead he goes for the Rain Dance. So this is a sweeper set. He's not gonna try to stall out anything. Goes straight for that hard Ice Beam. I managed to live it with just a Smither because, you know, superiors are very defensive Pokemon. It's fast as well, but I'm not gonna be able to take two. And you know what I should have done here? I should have gone for Glare because Glare would have been a lot better than Knockoff even though he had that Life Orb because I would have been able to easily just come in maybe with somebody to be able to hit him with super, well not super, but you know, a really strong hit. The Poison does help, but I feel that the Glare would have been a lot more useful and I I would have been able to sucker punch him at this point or I would have been able to outspeed him with Houndoom at this point and hit him with a Dark Pulse and that would have killed him instead of him getting poisoned and still having that great speed from the, from the speed boost in the rain. So, 
Anyways, that was a bad move. So, a lot of bad moves made here, but now that the rain is gone, this Ludicolo does not have Swiss Swim activated anymore. I'm gonna be able to go in there with Lucifer and easily Mega Evolve, hit this guy with the Heat Wave, take him out totally. But now, I still am very, very scared because he has that Tyranitar, and I was surprised he didn't bring Tyranitar on the switch to um, Lucifer because, you know, Tyranitar would be able to eat up those Heat Waves. But anyways, now that he has Ampapom, he is choice banding himself from Metagross, so he will not be able to go for the Fake Out unless he wants to really risk that. I just go in there with Cena to be able to, and by the way, doesn't Cena look amazing with that damn shiny color? The Kabuki trim for a fro shiny is one of the sexiest Pokemon in X and Y. I'm sorry, it's the truth. But anyways, I'm in there now with this Mega Charizard Y, and I'm scared of the special hit. Um, Cena can't really take those hits too well, but surprisingly enough, he goes for Flame Charge, so this is a very strange Mega Charizard Y, but it gives me ample opportunity to go for that Thunder Wave, slow this guy down, and the Thunder Wave was better than the Toxic in this scenario because <clears throat> Mega Charizard Y, he pretty much <coughs> outspeeds everyone who's left on the team. So it's great that this guy slowed down. I'm going to be able to go in there at Barbarical, and if he went for the Fire Blast, I would have probably been able to live it since I quad resist. Go for the Razor Shell, pray that it takes him out, but it doesn't, of course, because it's in the sun, and I'm burned thanks to that stupid, stupid made move that I made the, uh, earlier in the match. I'm going to take the Solar Beam right to the face, and there's no way that Shanty's living that. Shanty's done, and um, if you guys don't understand the reference of the name Shanty, you know, um, Pirates, Sailing, Ocean, seas, shanties, songs, you know, um, barbarical, water, you know, barnacles, pirates. It, it ties in, it ties in, trust me, it tied in a lot better when I thought of the name. Anyway, go for the bullet punch here to hit the um the amber palm, but because he pretty much is going to lose his checker when it comes to somebody that can come in really fast and fake out, maybe priority. I'm going to be able to actually live that Shadow Claw. I'm going to go for a secondary Bullet Punch to stay in there. And he knows how important his Ampapom may just be for later on to clean up anything that's left over. But I'm lucky that that Shadow Claw with the Choice Band did not kill Metagross. So that is extremely lucky for me. I'm going to go into Cena at this point. And you guys, th the video title will not throw you off. This battle is a straight wall Cena showcase because Cena right now is about to get into some serious shit. Anyways, I poisoned the Quagsire now because of course that'll be a lot better. I can't even thunder wave the guy. But anyways, he's poisoned and even though he is recovering, I'm not too bothered by it because looking at the rest of the Pokemon that he has left, he has a Snorlax left which could be taken down with the poison. I could just stall it out with Cena here and he does have a Tyranitar left which can be hit with the poison as well and be stalled out by Cena if it's a physical set at least. So this isn't any problem. Anyways, he goes into his Ampapom. I predict that. Go for the Roar. Bring his Quagsire right back out. Now I am scared of the Scald because they hit him on the special side and I am scared of them because they have the potential to burn me even though I don't have any physical moves. But at the end of the day here, I just want that Toxic to rack up on the Quagsire. But you have to take in mind that I really have nothing to hit this Quagsire with because Houndoom, I would, this guy would have to be at least at three-fourths health, maybe like 40% in order for me to KO him with the Dark Pulse. But um, anyways, he goes in there now with the roar that I gave him to his Tyranitar, and I'm gonna be able to poison this guy now, which is pretty much a great chance for me. But what I should have done when you look at retrospect in the battle is paralyze him. Because, to be honest with you, the paralysis on the Tyranitar, Oh, wait a minute, oh no, no, oh, I, I, I poisoned the turret. wait, did I paralyze the turret? Well, we'll see later on exactly what I did, because I can't remember that move exactly, we didn't get to that point yet, but for now, the Ampapom does take the poison, and it's going to work out really well for me, because Ampapom is down, thanks to the sand, so his own sand killed his Ampapom, I'm looking really nice in there, Cena is working right now, I hit the snow last with the poison, and I know this guy's like, what? Take the power up punch. Cena doesn't mind those power ups. Go ahead, power up. It doesn't matter. Wall Cena. You ain't penetrating my wall. You're not. I'm sorry. But anyways, Cena's in there sitting pretty with them leftovers. Those are keeping me at ample health while the sandstorm's raging along. Snorlax is getting hit really hard because he's got that poison. Anyways, I'm hitting this guy with baby doll eyes, so his body slams ain't doing much. It would have really sucked if he got the paralysis because this would have meant that I would be slower than the Tyranitar. And I wouldn't be able to inflict him with status. This is why I love dual status on Furfro because sometimes you don't really need Thunder Wave and other times you prefer Toxic but that situation can be switched around depending on the opponent. But now as you guys can see eating up those body slams. I know Snorlax isn't the physical behemoth but still the fact that I'm able to tank those so well and it's in the sand as well it's impressive. Power up punches. Eating those. It's no problem at all. Cena can take them. Cena doesn't mind. Whoa. Maria. Urosa. 
seen. <laughs> I'm able to take those with no problem. Now, here's where I did the wrong status to Tyranitar because I was just losing my mind at this point at the fact that Cena was taking all these hits so well. So I went for the Thunder Wave, forgetting that the Toxic would have been the better choice because it would have been ample damage on him, and forgetting that everyone left on my team is faster than Tyranitar. I mean, Metagross with the Bullet Punch, even though it's not Choice Bandit anymore, I wish it was still Choice Bandit because that would have killed something, but he earned that because he did really well getting that Choice Bandit off my Tyranitar. That was a good move, I'll give you that. I go in there with Metagross now, who's going to be able to go for that Bullet Punch, who's going to be faster, so there's no need to paralyze him. Now my last Pokemon will be Houndoom, who's going to be faster, so there's no need to paralyze him. A special freaking Tyranitar, by the way, with weakness policy. Like, what the hell's going on here? I, that's a strange set, but it, it worked in, in this equation. But hit this guy with the Dark Pulse, hoping to get a Power Flinch. I don't get a Power Flinch. This guy's going to be in there, be able to hit me with the Dark Pulse. I guess he didn't have a physical Stone Edge to go for. So I guess I should thank my lucky stars that this Tyranitar is a special set, which is a very interesting Tyranitar. I haven't seen that before. But if I hit him with Toxic rather than Thunder Wave from Cena, then he would have basically been dead by now, and I would have had full HP to take on his Pokemon. But at this point now, my, my Lucifer is not going to be able to take another Earthquake from the Snorlax, and he's going to be able to finish me on a 2-0 defeat from Nails. That was an incredible battle. That really showcased my fur fro well, and um, Cena, and um... You know, I made some foolish moves there. There were some times where I should have done the other status, but you live and you learn. Definitely know how to handle your statuses, man. If the Pokemon's slow, there's no need to paralyze them. If the Pokemon is a fast threat, then paralyze away, you know? But make sure you always have that Toxic ready if it's a slow, bulky Pokemon. And that's what I should have done with the Tyranitar, because then I would have been able to KO him with how, you know, there, there would have been a lot better plays made if I had just, you know, known how to do things better. And, you know, the whole thing with the Ammo Pump taking Metagross's Choice Band, because Metagross would have OKO'd his damn um, Tyranitar if I did have that choice ban. But you know, that whole thing, that was a that was that was a good play on his part. That was unexpected. But then again, this is the kind of stuff that awaits you in the mixed tier, man. You don't know what you're gonna fight. You you have no idea. You can't you think you're not prepared for everything in OU? In mixed tier, you don't know what the hell the opponent's gonna bring. It's such a random tier and it's just so so insane. And the fact that so few people play it. It's really a thrill for me to get in there with that mixed tier Pokemon battle. But anyways, guys, I want to thank you once again for tuning in. And I truly hope that you enjoyed this battle. I put a lot of effort into it. And um, don't worry, I'm going to be changing up my team very soon. And I think you guys are going to like the new, the new team that I use. Because I'm using somewhat of a taboo Pokemon, per se. It'll be fun, trust me. And I'm working on the team right now as we speak. Don't expect the next battle to take as long as this one did to get uploaded from the first one. It was just a matter of me waiting for the right tools to be in place, and everything's in place now. So, anyways, guys, I will talk to you in the next video. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.